Hi guys, I'm Ashley and it's time for a book haul. This book haul goes from whenever my last one was, maybe a couple of months ago now, but this haul actually includes a hell of a lot of pre-orders of anticipated releases because a lot of them came out in October and November, so here we are. I'm going to talk about them. <laughs> If you've been keeping up with my weekly reading vlogs then you will probably have seen all of these before because I do mention them as I actually received them but everybody is a fan of a book haul so I just thought I would kind of wrap them all together and make a video for you. So I was going to do this in chronological order but I'm actually not going to just because it makes absolutely no logical sense if I do that. <laughs> there are certain books that are better grouped together and so I'm just going to do it in the best way possible. And the two that I'm starting with I'm starting with these just to get them out of the way because they're both really big and really heavy so um yeah. But these two don't take too much explaining for obvious reasons because the first one is the illustrated Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. I'm sure I don't need to explain what the Harry Potter series is about but these illustrated editions are gradually coming out. We're up to the fourth one now and I just decided to pick it up. I thought this would actually be a lot bigger than it is because this is only just a little bit bigger than the previous one. However, Goblet of Fire is the first of the really chunky books in the series, so I was expecting this to be absolutely massive, but it isn't, and that's because there are less illustrations inside it than there are in the previous ones, which is a bit of a shame because we are paying for an illustrated edition, so for it to not have as many illustrations it's slightly disappointing, but nevertheless this is, of course, absolutely stunning. I'm really happy with the illustrations that are inside it, especially because this one is full of dragons. Following the theme of illustrations, the next one is Mythologica by Steve Kershaw and Victoria Toppin. This one is a big illustrated encyclopedia of Greek gods, goddesses, monsters, heroes, everything like that. I'm not going to talk about this one too much because it was in my October wrap-up which went up on Wednesday so I'll leave a link to that down below if you want to hear my thoughts on it. But this is sold as a kid's book and I pretty much just wanted it for the artwork because the artwork inside this is absolutely stunning. I'm very very glad that I did get it because it's very quickly become one of my favourite books to flip through. So moving on to this um, rather large stack behind me. <laughs> The first few were actually books that are sent to me and this one was sent to me by the publisher. This is an arc of The Sisters Grimm by Mena Van Prague. This is a fantasy book that comes out in February next year and the synopsis is a little bit difficult to explain but I'll try my best. <laughs> so this follows four sisters Grimm who were born on the same day by four different mothers but the same father. These four girls have elemental powers and once upon a time they did actually know each other. When they were eight years old they all found each other, however at 13 years old they were separated once again and now that they're 18 it's imperative that they find each other again. In 33 days all four sisters will meet their father in a place that they can only visit in their dreams and when they do so it's at that point that they discover who they truly are, the extent of their powers and how they have to use them to help save everybody that they love. However come the end of this book only three of the sisters will survive and one of them will die. I think this sounds so so good, I'm so ready for it. Everything on the back says it's a tour de force of fairy tale and imagination and with it being focused on elemental powers I am just so ready for that. If you have been on this channel for any amount of time then you might know that nature and magic is something that I absolutely love being combined so I saw the elemental power thing and was just like I need it and now I have it thanks to the publishers so very excited about this. Hopefully I will get to it before it comes out. I'm very excited. <laughs> So the next four books were sent to me by Gavin, whose channel is Gavin Hetherington. Gavin is hosting a readathon throughout November called Believeathon. If you somehow didn't know, I've mentioned it in quite a lot of videos now. But this readathon focuses on reading children's and middle grade books. And as I was talking to Gavin about what books I'm hoping to pick up, he decided to buy me four of them. So thank you Gavin once again for all of these books, I am so happy with them. So all of the children's books that I'm about to mention I will be reading throughout November, hopefully. <laughs> but the first two books are The House with Chicken Legs and The Girl Who Speaks Bear by Sophie Anderson. These two books are part of the same series but I believe they follow different stories, they're just set within the same world. So The House with Chicken Legs is about a girl whose grandmother is Baba Yaga and all she wants is to desperately make friends. However, her house just gets up and walks off every so often because it's on chicken legs and that's what a Baba Yaga's house does. So she finds it very, very difficult because she doesn't have any friends. As I'm filming this, I am currently reading it, but I'm only 100 pages to the end and I'm hoping to finish that tonight. So if you do want to know my final thoughts, then tune into my vlog on Monday or just ask me in the comments. 
And then the sequel, Girl Who Speaks Bear, is about a girl who is found abandoned in a bear cave when she's younger. And all her life she's followed by whispers from the people in the village who just don't really understand her. One day she's forced to leave her home and set out on a journey to find out who she really is. And on that journey, she makes quite a lot of new friends. These two do just sound like really charming books and yeah, I'm looking forward to reading them both. <laughs> Next up is Tunnel of Bones by Victoria Schwab. This is a sequel to The City of Ghosts. The City of Ghosts following a girl called Cassidy Blake whose parents are quite famous ghost hunters. What her parents don't know about Cassidy is the fact that she can actually see ghosts. Now one day Cassidy's parents are actually offered a TV deal to go to Edinburgh, one of the most haunted cities in the world, and make a TV programme out of it. But of course this poses a problem for Cassidy because she can see ghosts and being in one of the most haunted cities it's not going to be fun. However, on this trip she does discover more about her abilities and makes some unlikely friends in the process. This one is a follow-up, all I know about it is it is set in Paris but I'm very much looking forward to it. It's been quite a while since I've read a Victoria Schwab book and I think this one will be really quick to get through. Next up we have Frost Heart by Jamie Littler. This one is a kind of polar fantasy children's book and this follows a boy called Ash whose parents have gone missing and the only company he has is a grumpy yeti guardian. The boy falls into an accident but this actually reveals that he has magical powers and from this discovery he's actually whisked upon the frost art which is an explorer slayer with the daring crew who need his help. But can Ash master his powers and find his parents in the process? Now I'm sure I've said every single time I've mentioned this book recently that I am not sure about it. I think this might not be my kind of thing but I am very intrigued about it because this is one of Gav's favourite children's books of all times so I want to see why. I'm hoping that I love it as much as he does because he just adores this book. But I will be reading it for Believeathon because this is the group book for the readathon so I'll be reading this one soon. So those are all the books that were gifted to me and I just thought I'd throw this one in on the end of that because I do have another book that will go towards Believeathon and is a children's book but I did buy this one myself and this one is North Child by Edith Patu? Patau? I don't know how you pronounce it, I apologise. But this follows a young girl called Rose who was born facing north and so everything in the old stories says that she will set out on an adventure of a journey. During this journey she makes a pact with a giant white bear who takes her to a castle that's full of dark enchantments and temptations. The synopsis is pretty vague and just leaves it there but I imagine that this is quite the adventure plot and I'm very much looking forward to it and also I just love this cover. I believe this book was first published quite a while ago but then it's been reprinted in this edition and I'm quite glad it was because I wouldn't have known about it if not. It is quite a chunky one for a kids book but there are pages that are like not quite full. So hopefully it will prove to be a quicker read than the chunkiness suggests. <laughs> so then we move on to all of the books that I had pre-ordered. There's a lot of them. <laughs> the first one being The Testaments by Margaret Atwood. Again I'm not going to talk too long about this because it is in my October wrap-up which again it's already up so you can go and watch that if you want to. But this is the sequel to The Handmaid's Tale which is one of the most famous dystopian books and follows a world which is just really quite grim because there's this kind of systematic forcing of women to become either wives or childbearers. And The Handmaid's Tale does follow a handmaid who essentially is a woman who is given to a family and forced to try and have a child every single month. It's a very grim story and this is the follow-up to it which came out many years afterwards so everybody thought that Handmaid's Tale was a standalone. I didn't love this one but I did enjoy it, I just found it very very different from The Handmaid's Tale but as I said I'm not going to go into it too much because it is in my October wrap-up. So you can follow the link down in the description box to go and find out my thoughts on this one. Next up we have Daughters of Nuri by Rennie K. Mayer. This one is a fantasy book where in ancient times there was a gruesome war between gods and the only remaining evidence that these gods exist are these two twin sisters who are the descendants of the gods. But these two girls were actually separated at birth and raised in very different circumstances. So one of them lives quite a quiet life in a small village and is quite content with that. The other one grows up in a palace. However, these two girls do pretty much share the same face, the same bloodline and the same powers and they do eventually find their way back to each other. This book is also inspired by African mythology and I just think it sounds so interesting. The cover is absolutely stunning and I cannot wait to get to this one. Next up we have Kingdom of Souls by Renan Barron. This one is probably one of my most anticipated releases of the year and I'm so sad that I haven't managed to read it yet but 
At the same time, I kind of want to save it for when I'm not too swamped with uni work so that I can actually appreciate it and hopefully fall in love with it. But this one follows a girl called Arrow who comes from a line of witch doctors. Everybody in her family has magical abilities and yet after years of years of trying, Arrow still hasn't discovered hers. As more years passed, Arrow becomes desperate and decides to trade years of her life in exchange for magical abilities. But while digging around to find out how to do this ritual, she actually comes across more secrets. The most worrying of which being that the Demon King is stirring after lying dormant for many years. If that wasn't a big enough problem, then remember that Arrow is having to trade years of her life in order to gain any kind of magical ability and so the stakes are very much raised as her lifespan becomes shorter the more magic she uses. This again is inspired by African folklore. I just think this sounds so good. Good. I can't wait to read it. I'm so intrigued by the idea of someone trading years of their life in exchange for magic and I very much want to see how that plays out so hopefully I'll have the time to dedicate to this one soon because I need it in my life. <laughs> Next up we have one of the prettiest books that I own and I will admit that this was partially a cover buy because this one is The Deathless Girls by Kieran Millwood Hargrave. This is said to be a retelling of The Wives of Dracula and it follows two sisters. Apparently I have a lot of books about sisters. Was that a trend in autumn? Just sisters in fantasy books because wow there's a lot of them. <laughs> But this follows twin sisters who, the day before their divining, which is an event where they discover what their fate is, they're actually captured and taken away by the evil Boyavalka, I believe is how you say it. The sisters are taken away and forced to work, but one of the sisters, Lil, finds comfort in another person called Mira. However, all too soon, the sisters find out about a mythical man called the Dragon, who actually accepts girls as gifts. Now that's all the synopsis says, but I'm presuming that the sisters get tangled up with the dragon. Maybe one of them is offered as a gift somehow. And this sounds a lot like Uprooted in that sense, because in Uprooted you also have this kind of legendary man who is called the dragon, who accepts girls as gifts. So I don't know whether it's based off the same kind of story as that, or if it's something completely different, but it does sound very reminiscent of that, and I am intrigued. But yes, I did get the signed exclusive edition because this is just one of the most stunning books that I own, both that side, inside and underneath the dust jacket as well. I just, oh, it's so, so stunning. Very happy about this. And it also has pink sprayed edges. So yes, it was kind of a cover buy, but I am also very intrigued about the synopsis. And I do have quite vague plans to buddy read this with Zavina, whose channel is the Psychonix, so Hopefully we will get around to doing that at some point, but we are both at university, so I don't know when that will happen, but at some point, it will happen. <laughs> Next up is one that I'm sure you're all familiar with if you watch booktube at all, because this one is Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo. This one follows a girl called Alex Stern, who is the sole survivor of a very dramatic crime. But when she wakes up in her hospital bed, she's actually visited by someone who gives her a full scholarship to Yale University. The reason she's given the scholarship is because she can actually see ghosts, and so she set the task to join the Ninth House and kind of watch over all the secret societies that go on because they all kind of use occult magic and quite dark magic. And so she's enlisted to become part of the society which watches over all the other ones and make sure that everything is going all right, nothing's taken too far. However, pretty soon into this book, a girl is found murdered and people don't really seem to be taking it all too seriously. They kind of just jump to the most obvious of conclusions, but Alex actually thinks there's more going on and so she digs deeper into the storyline and so we have the plot of the book. <laughs> Again, this is one that I'm currently reading. I'm about halfway through it as I'm filming this video. I am enjoying it. I'm not entirely convinced by the characters because I do think that they're trying to be really distinct characters and I'm just not quite pulled in by them. I feel like I'm being told what to think of them rather than like going down my own route of discovering what the characters are like. However, I am very much intrigued by the book. I love dark academia books. It's probably one of my favourite genres actually. Even though I haven't read too many of them, I just think it's always an atmosphere that really pulls me in so very intrigued to read the rest of it and I'm hoping that I end up loving it so yeah. I know that there's been some mixed reviews on this one so I am genuinely intrigued to see what I end up feeling when I come to the end. Stay tuned! <laughs> The final few are ones that I mentioned pretty recently, so if you have been keeping up with my vlogs then you probably already know that I got these recently. But the first one is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. Now this is one of my all-time favourite books and I did end up buying this one because it's a new edition. This is the Waterstones Collector's Edition and it was brought out in celebration of the Starless Sea, 
which is my next book. But I'll come back to this one in a second. The Night Circus is about a circus that arrives at night, it arrives without warning, there aren't any advertisements saying that it's going to arrive, it just turns up at random, seemingly as if by magic. Plot twist, this is actually a magic circus because the entire circus is a competition between two magicians. The entire circus is a kind of exhibition of what the magicians can do and it's just... I've never read a book with such a good magical atmosphere. I adore it. It's definitely not a book that's for everybody because it is quite a slow going like almost drowsy kind of fantasy book. It's very much atmospheric and there's not any like fight scenes or anything, it is just magical things occurring. But it is a lot darker than I remembered it being because I did reread this pretty recently and it does have some darker aspects to it as well. But it is one of my favourite books and when I saw that there was a collector's edition coming out I had to get it even though this isn't my favourite cover I find it quite jarring that it's blue because The Night Circus is quite notorious for being black, white and red. But as I said it is brought out in celebration of the Starless Sea and I do think that these two look pretty good together. And I do have to appreciate the bright blue sprayed edges because that is quite bright. <laughs> So then, of course, I also have The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. This is her newest release and again, one of my most anticipated releases of the year. Erin Morgenstern hasn't brought out any of the books since The Night Circus, which was released many years ago. So this has been long awaited. This again is a synopsis that's quite hard to explain, but I will do my best. But from what I can gather, it follows a man who opens a book and is reading really quite strange stories inside it. But the strangest of them all is the story of his own childhood. As he keeps reading, it does seem that this book tells the entire story of his life and so wanting to find out answers to why this is a thing. He follows the three clues that are on the cover, a bee, a key and a sword. Following those three clues, he ends up at a masquerade ball, a dangerous secret club and eventually through a doorway that leads to a labyrinth. And from that point on, this is where the synopsis gets really strange and I can't really follow what's happening. <laughs> But essentially he's making his way through a labyrinth, there's lots of really bizarre things happening and he needs to get to the end to find out why his story is written within a book. I'm actually quite nervous for this one because I adore the Night Circus so hard that I'm scared that this one's going to let me down. And as I said it does sound really bizarre so I don't know whether it's going to be too bizarre that I'm kind of thrown off or whether I'm going to completely fall in love with it. I feel like it's going to be all or nothing. I really hope it's all and I do fall in love with it because it's been so long since Erin Morgenstern has written anything new. So while I am excited I am very much daunted. I don't know when I'm going to be able to read this one because it is quite a chunky one. Although it is only 500 pages so I don't know why it's quite so large. <laughs> I say only 500 pages. 500 pages is a lot but like it feels chunkier. But this edition is the Waterstones exclusive edition, so it is, it's got the three clues sprayed on the edges and it is also signed right there. But I actually got this edition because I don't love the normal UK edition. I think it's really garish. It's awful. In fact, this edition has, it's, it's won me over, but even this edition is somewhat garish because you have the kind of blue marble in effect that looks like when you throw a nail varnish in water and it goes all weirdly marbleish. It looks like that and then you have the gold but then the spine is black marble and the back is this really colourful marble in effect and then the inside it is pink. Like <laughs> there's no rhyme or reason to this book whatsoever and I don't know whether that's because the book is just as random or I don't know. I much prefer the US edition because it's just black and it has ribbons and it looks all nice whereas this one I don't understand. <laughs> but in my opinion this cover is better than the normal UK edition because the normal UK edition has so many things on the cover. Ugh, I don't like it. This only came out yesterday as I'm filming this and already I've seen so many people rave about the writing. So I think this is very much going to be one of those that has really beautiful lyrical writing. I don't know about the plot though. I guess I'll find out when I eventually can read it. You will also be hearing about this again in my weekly vlog that's going up on Monday because I did get it this week so it will be included in that vlog. Sorry for the repetition! <laughs> and just to continue with the repetition, the next and final two books were in last week's vlog so yeah. I can probably explain them both a bit better this time around though because the first one is Great Goddesses by Nikita Gill which is just... it's white on camera. I can't even... I can't show it any way that's going to show up. There we go, that's the best I can do, really. 
but on the front this says it's life lessons from myths and monsters. This essentially is a kind of poetry collection that's inspired by Greek mythology so it takes gods and goddesses, some of them who can be considered monsters, and writes a retelling of sorts. Now what intrigues me is that this does on the front say life lessons however just flicking through it I haven't seen anything that seems life lesson-ish. Life lesson-ish? Educational. Motivational? It doesn't seem like life lessons is what I'm trying to say. It just seems like various poetic retellings of goddesses. I'm not actually sure what to think of this book but poetry isn't usually my thing so again it's a bit outside my comfort zone but Greek mythology is very much inside my comfort zone and I just thought it would be something different. The cover is stunning, not that I can show you, that's the best I can do. And this is praised as a feminist retelling kind of book so I am intrigued because I read a lot of those. <laughs> and then finally we have My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. This is a horror book I guess that's set in the 80s and it's very much not my usual kind of thing but I do want to read more horror books and I kept saying in my vlog when I got this that I don't really know what it's about but I do I just don't know how to explain it much differently from the title because it's about two girls who are best friends and one day they go skinny dipping but after they do that one of the girls comes home and starts acting really strangely really strange things start happening when she's around and so they come to the conclusion that she is actually possessed by a demon of sorts. The other friend starts digging around, starts her own kind of investigation and the synopsis very dramatically says at the end, the fate of Abby and Gretchen will be determined by a single question, is their friendship powerful enough to beat the devil? Which is a bit cringy but um it's fine, we can deal with that sometimes. I'm very intrigued by this one, I've been in the mood to read this very specific book for probably a week or two now, I think because of Halloween's just passed and autumn I kind of associate darker books with autumn but again haven't had time to pick it up and now that November's hit we have Believe-a-thon and all my university reading and then Born-a-thon and it's just I don't know when I'll be able to pick this up which is a shame because I am in the mood for it right now but I am already reading six books so let's not do that. However I'm very much happy that this is on my shelves. I feel like this popped up on UK booktube all of a sudden and I want to know what the deal is so yeah. <laughs> I want to try and lift this up somehow but all the hardbacks are on the top now so I need to do some rearranging here. <laughs> okay this is definitely not going to fit in shot because this stack is bigger than my entire torso so um but these are all the books that I've gotten recently. It's a real long workout so I'm gonna put these down. <laughs> As always let me know if you've read any of these books, tell me which ones to prioritise because I'm really bad at making decisions and I can only read a few books of my own choice each month now that university has taken over so let me know which ones to prioritise because I'm really bad at figuring that out. <laughs> but if you enjoyed this video then remember to leave a like and a comment to let me know that you're here. Remember that all the links for everything are down in the description box. Links to all my social media, any books that I mentioned, any people that I mentioned, everything like that, it's all down there. If you're not subscribed already then please consider doing that but for now I hope you're having a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye! Oh this is gonna go really well. This is really heavy. <laughs> I'm sure there's something there.